Hey, this is Maya Basics 6, Body Mechanics. This is the last Maya Basics class. The next section deals with human body mechanics, so this session is an introduction to some basic body mechanics. And we'll review some of the animation principles that we've taken so far. Today we'll cover some principles that are not in the original list of principles, but are extremely important in animation. We actually did them in last class, but we'll do them a little differently in this class. We're going to incorporate some more overshoot and drag using a mannequin arm. So don't forget our workflow. As always, we'll begin our animation by blocking in our key poses and general timing, and then we'll check it and refine our work. Before we get started with animation, let's take a look at our mannequin rig, or the arm for the mannequin anyway. If you want to get rid of the stage and lights, you can just go to your display layers here, and you can just click those on or off. Also too, don't forget to click Select Surface Objects button at the top here, so you don't uh, accidentally select any of the geometry. You only want to select these curves. So if you select this control, this is the arm position control, and you can use that to move the entire arm anywhere. You can translate and rotate that. And this is the shoulder control. It moves independently of the, the master. And we have the elbow control, pretty straightforward, just to prevent any unnatural movements. Uh, the other rotations, the X and the Z rotations are locked, so you can only rotate it in Y. And then we have our wrist control, which rotates in any direction. Then there's a hand control here. And if we select that, we can go into the channel box, and you'll see there's a whole bunch of different uh, controls for the hand. We don't need any of the rotator translates, so you don't want to move that around anywhere. You just want to leave it right there so it stays above the hand. We have finger controls, which bends the fingers all the way back, and that's as far as they go. You can drag select over the index, middle, pinky, and thumb, and you can move them all at the same time. And then there's finger bends. Those just bend the first knuckle of the fingers. So if you want to do something like this, and then we have spreads, you can do one at a time or you can do all of them at the same time. Spreads the fingers out. And then we have a, a thumb roll and we have a pinky roll as well. So I'm just going to set these rotations back to zero. Alright, so let's get started with our animation. So we'll just break this down. This is what we're going for. What we're going to do is have it start at a rest position. We're going to pose the hand into a rest position. And then we're going to bring it up into an anticipation pose. But on the way up, we're going to drag the hand. When we drag the hand, we're going to break the joints. Uh, we're going to bend the elbow and the wrist. Gravity's taking effect on this arm. We want to get this nice arcing motion in our, in our animation. And it's going to arc into an anticipation pose here. And then it's going to point. And this, this is going to happen quickly. And again, when the arm moves forward to the point, we're going to drag the hand back a little bit. And then it's going to point. So this is going to be an overshoot and settle. So the overshoot is just going past the final pose. And then it settles. And the overshoot, as we discussed in the last class, is just because the arm is moving so quickly, the momentum is causing it to continue moving forward until it comes back into its settle. And as always, let's do a, a 10 frame hold, at least a 10 frame hold at the beginning, and a 10 frame hold at the end, just for presentation. So open up your outliner. And let's get to the camera. We'll just expand that. Use the position node, as always. And we're just going to move that out a little bit. We're going to need more room here. So we're just going to stage this a little bit. We may have to change it again, but for now, we'll just leave that. So the first thing we need to do is get it down into a, a rest pose. So I'm going to grab the shoulder, and we're just going to block out this animation at first, taking great care with each pose that we set to make sure that each pose is a really nice pose. For now, we're just, since we're just working with an arm, uh, we'll just talk about just posing an arm. So we're going to start with the shoulder. So make sure you get the upper arm where you want it to go, just focusing on the upper arm. And then go to the elbow and, and then you focus on the lower part of the arm. and Get that where you want it. You can rotate it any way. If you rotate it in X, you'll see, you'll, get, you'll see the bend in the arm a little bit better. And then go down to the wrist and pose it where you want it. So we're just kind of working our way from top to bottom here. I'm just going to move our camera out a little bit. So we want to frame that. All right, so I've already gone ahead and made the shelf button for this. We've already gone over that a couple times. Go ahead and create a shelf button and name it arm or whatever else you'd like to name it. You always want to be looking in the camera view to see how the final pose is going to look, but it's also good to, to uh, orbit around in the perspective view as well. And if things are going wonky, just hit F to focus and you can spin around it a little bit easier. All right, I think that's pretty good. We'll just do the fingers now. All right, so just a quick way to get the fingers into a rest pose. We'll go to the finger curls. Just select index, middle, and pinky. 
just get all the fingers but not the thumb. So I'm just going to drag over all these so they're highlighted and go into your perspective view and just middle mouse button drag for the virtual slider. We'll just get a little bit of a bend in all of them. And then I usually go down and just select everything but the first finger. Get those bent a little bit and then I'll go down to the pinky and bend that a little more. So if there's four fingers you can just do it the same way. We want to get the thumb to rest a little bit. It's already got a nice bend in it so I'm just going to go to the thumb bend and just bring that down a little bit. Alright so that's a pretty good rest pose. So I'm going to hit my uh, arm button now, select all the controls on frame 1 and just hit S, set a key. Now we'll go to frame 10 and do our 10 frame holds. So we'll just set another key without moving anything. And we need to get the arm moving up into an anticipation pose, but that's way up here. So let's actually, we need something in the middle. So we need to get a nice arcing motion here, but we want to drag the arm. So let me see, this action should probably take about, I don't know, 12 frames or so, about half a second. So let's go to frame, let's go about six frames down the timeline. And again, as always, this is rough. So I'm going to go about halfway, halfway to where we need to go. And let's bend the arm. We're going to start bending all the joints now. Just do whatever you need to to get it into the pose that you want it to be in. Just like we were talking about before with our, with our avocado character. When something's dragging behind, it's almost like it's pointing in the direction where it was, like it wants to still be there. So. We're going to have the hand point right into the direction where it came from, or at least a little bit less anyway, something like that. All right, so that's about halfway up to where we needed to go. We'll hit the arm button to select all the controls again, and S on the keyboard. So if we scrub over that, this is what we have so far. All right, so let's bring it right up into our anticipation pose. I'm going to go another six frames down the timeline now. So again, I'm using the shoulder control and I'm really just focusing on that upper arm, getting that at the angle that I want it to be at. And then I'm going to select the elbow control and get that at the angle I want it to be at. And then work my way over to the hand. It's not a great idea to pose things where they're a straight on view like this. It's good to just give it a bit of an angle for depth. That's a good anticipation pose, so I'll select my arm button and key that. Now let's scroll over what we've done so far. Okay. Okay, that's okay, but I don't like this. This action here isn't great. What we want is to get, we want to get that nice arcing motion that sweeps through a frame here. It's nice all the way up to here, but then between this pose and this pose, it's really going from one pose to the next. It's just really linear. So we're going to set another pose in here. So we pose these uh, keys six frames apart, so we'll just go three frames in the middle, and we'll just unbend the elbow a little bit. So we want to get this arcing motion, so we want to get the arm out a little bit further here. All right, let's try that. Now I hit my arm button and set a key, and we'll scrub over that and see how that's looking. So that's better. So I'm just going to move that shoulder control down a little bit so the elbow doesn't look like it's flipping too much. So that's better. Okay, and we'll move this one back a little bit. Just so that elbow doesn't pop up and down. It continuously moves, moves in this direction. So that's looking okay. So let's go about six or eight frames down the timeline. I already have the shoulder control, so we'll just move it back a little bit more. So this is going to be a settle. So we've, we've gone about six or eight frames down the timeline. These poses are going to be spaced quite far apart, but we're only going to move it a tiny bit. So lots of in-betweens, but poses are close together. We'll give us a, a slower motion. We'll just move everything a tiny bit. Select the arm button, key it. And if we scrub over that movement, so that'll be real slow. That's a nice cushion or ease in, ease into the anticipation pose. So if we play that, and we can even hold that for about three frames, and that'll end up being a moving hold later when we spline everything. And then we're going to ease out of this position. So we'll do the same thing, but just going the other way, just moving it a tiny bit. And we'll drag the arm back a little bit. So we're going to move the, just selecting the shoulder control and focusing on the, the upper arm. I'm going to start to move that forward, but the elbow is going to drag. The upper arm or the lower arm is going to get left behind a little bit. And same with the hand. 
that's our next pose, so we'll select the arm and key that. And we'll scrub over that. So just like the wave principle that we animated, uh, when I was talking about the base of the leaf starting to move first and then the tip gets left behind, the shoulder is the muscle that's, that's actually causing the action to happen first, and then the elbow and the wrist are going to catch up later. So we're just going to get that across to the audience with our posing. So we can even bend the elbow a little more here. And I'm just going to go about six frames down the timeline and we'll go straight into our, we can go straight into our point and then we're going to have to put a pose in between the, this one and the point pose, but we'll get into that in a sec. So let's just go right into our point pose. I gave it about six frames. That might be too many. That'll do. Okay, so we'll just uh, select our hit our arm button and key that. Okay, so now we got this going on, and it just stops dead. We don't want that to happen. Usually, when you come to an end of a of a movement like this, you're either going to ease into it if it's a slow movement, kind of like what we did here, we eased. But this is a quick movement. The point's really fast. So what we're going to do is overshoot that. And like we talked about before, because the arm's uh, moving so quickly, it has momentum, and it would continue to move in that direction and then go back and settle. We'll go a few more frames down the timeline. For now, we're not gonna to be too picky with how many, maybe five or six, and that's gonna be our settle. We'll go back to the last pose that we did, and that'll be our overshoot. We can grab this uh, the arm position control, and we'll just move that out a little bit. And we'll straighten the hand and make the finger completely straight. So everything should be very, very straight and pointing straight out that way. And we're just going to bump the whole arm to the left a little bit. So we'll select that arm, we'll key it. All right, so after our anticipation, we have this, and then it comes back and settles. So when we play that now, it won't be such a dead stop. We give it a bit of an overshoot and settle. And we can even, for the entire hand, we can even give it a bit of a rotation. Since it's coming from this direction, it's likely that the arm would actually, or the wrist would actually bend this way a little bit. And then for our settle, why don't we give the arm a little bit of a bend and have it settle in a more natural position. And then we'll select our arm button and key it. So the overshoots, everything's completely straight and then it just settles into a natural position. So we've gotten the animation pretty much done. We're just going to put a little bit of an ease on the end. We're only going to move things very slightly here. So I'll just bring the shoulder down, the elbow up a little bit. And we'll just relax these joints a little bit more just to give it a nice cushion at the end. And you can see how that works. So overshoot, settle, and nice little cushion and relax. All right, so one thing that we're missing here, we have to add another pose in. Just like we did on the way up here, we drag the arm, and then we had to add in another extra pose here for the arc before it goes into the anticipation. Same thing here with uh, when we're going from anticipating into pointing. We need something in the middle here. It does arc very nice, but we just need to add a little bit more drag here. Now you can do that in the graph editor, but I like to, when I'm blocking out my animation, I like to get about 90% there before we start refining. So I like to put in all the poses that I need, even if I have to add in an extra one. As long as all the controls for each pose are keyed on one frame, it stays organized in that way. It's good. What I'm going to do is place my time marker in between anticipation pose and the point, and we'll just get, let me see here, we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so let's make these six frames apart. I'm gonna grab the entire arm, select the entire arm, and just move this whole thing in so that the space between these two poses are only six frames apart. I'll go right in the middle. I'll go three frames uh, between these two. So it's right in the center. Give the elbow a bit of a, a drag. I'm gonna advance the shoulder a little bit. So we want the upper arm to, to be driving the, this motion as it lunges forward. So this is going to be driving the motion, but the elbow is going to drag behind. And the wrist. And it's nice to turn it. By placing it this way, we can see the finger is starting to come out. It'll give us a nice feeling of drag. So we can see the fingers on this side of the hand, right? Or key that pose. Let's just scrub over it and see how it looks. Okay. So that looks okay, but I don't want the finger actually coming out too early. We're going to bring the finger back down a little bit. I want the finger to come out until it's right about there. So we can do that in the, in the graph editor. So let's select the entire arm, all the controls for the arm. 
we'll leave the first key. We want that to stay flat and the last key to stay flat. So we'll just grab all the keys in the middle and you can right click and go to tangents and select spot spline. And you can also, as we've talked about before, you can also just grab all these keys in the center, leaving the first and last. Select all those and hit your spline button right here. All right, so let's take a look at our animation now. It should look a lot better. And I'm just gonna drag the range slider over so that we have a less dead space at the end. All right, so this is our opportunity to adjust some of our timing. So we do have some weirdness going on. And our 10 frame hold here, I don't want that to, to move so much. The anticipation holds a little, too, little bit too long. We have a six or eight frame ease. It's a little much because I put a hold in as well. And the hold, there's three in-betweens in this hold and you can see the, the keys are spline. So it does actually act as a, as a bit of a cushion. We don't need all of these in-betweens here. So we're just gonna take all these keys Make sure I have my arm, all my arms selected. Take all these keys and just bring them in. I brought them in about three frames. You know, I actually don't think I need this hold. This is where I had the ease. And then the next one I had, a, I left a hold. So I'm just gonna delete that key frame. Delete and then bring the next, from the next key frame on, just bring, just bring them in. Because what I did was I eased in and then I held and then I eased out. So I just got rid of the hold. So it just eases in and then eases out. And I think that's enough. Yeah, that's more than enough. So I'm feeling like this arm goes up a little bit too slow. So I'm gonna grab, make sure I have all the controls by selecting my arm button. And then just grab all these keys and just bring them in a little bit. Maybe two frames. Like it needs to be a little faster on the rise. I had three frame space here and a three frame space here. So that's six frames altogether to get from here to here. And I think that can be a little faster. So I'm gonna grab all these keys and just trim that up, bring it in one frame and go to the next frame, grab all these keys after it and bring it in one frame. And now we're just adjusting our timing here. And let's play that. That's feeling better to me. Let's go to our graph editor now, we're gonna refine. So you can go to the area where the problem, go, definitely go to the area where the problem is. Looking at our camera view here, we can scrub over. We don't want that to move around so much on our hold. But we also don't want it to be totally static. We want it to move a little bit. Let's just select our rotation values here. So the Y is not doing anything. It's completely flat. We can flatten these out by hand just by selecting the, the handle and moving it, moving it down. Just to get it to be a little flatter, so less movement. Or you can select these two keys and just hit your flat tangent button and it'll flatten them out completely and then you can just move them up a little bit just so it's there's a tiny bit of a, a hold on it or a moving hold on it. I just did the shoulder control just now. Okay, now here's the elbow. I'm just gonna select the rotate Y on the elbow in the graph editor here. And we can see that it's quite a bit of a dip here so there's too much movement on it. So I'm just gonna tone it down and we'll do the same thing with the wrist. The wrist has rotate X, Y, and Z. And you can see they're all bulging out in this area. So it's good to go to the problem area, place your time marker on the problem area. And then just tone down these little, these curves here so they're not bulging out too much. Then when we scrub over that, you can see that the movement that I had there that I didn't like is much, much less. Sometimes it's actually good to, instead of having it go up and down like that, it's good to actually just, you can grab your key over here and move it down so that it, start, it actually starts to ease into its next movement. So I don't like what it's doing in the rotate Y. So I'm just gonna flatten that out completely. So there's no movement on it. Okay, so I'm fine with that. It's getting real nitpicky here, but that's the way you gotta be. All right, so I have the wrist control selected right now. I'm just gonna look at my graph editor. Um, okay, so at this point I wanna drag that hand down a little bit more. So we'll use the Y control and the X. No, that's turning it the wrong way. It's okay to just grab something if you're not sure. You know that the, you can see the rotate X goes around this way. So you know it's gonna do this. If you grab the rotate X in the graph editor and move it up and down, you, can, you know what it's gonna do. So we wanna move it down in Z, the rotate Z. So we'll grab the rotate Z and we'll just drag it a little bit. And yeah, maybe I do wanna rotate it that way a little. And these, when you make these adjustments, you know, wherever you move one of these keys, if you slide it down or up, it's permanent. Like it just stays like, it's not permanent, but it, it'll stay put for you. So actually from here to here, the hand just goes in a straight line. 
And I would like it actually to arc a little bit more, but I could think I can get away with it. Uh, I can get away with just using the elbow for that. I'm gonna select the elbow and the rotate Y curve. And I'm actually gonna break that tangent. So I'm gonna go in right in between these two key frame, these two key poses, and they're only two frames apart. So I'm gonna place my time marker right in the center, and you can see where it is. I'm gonna break this tangent for now, and then grab the one side of the handle, and let's bend it. So now we want it to go the other way. So I'll bend it this way, and then I'll grab the other tangent, or the other key, and break that tangent, and then I'll bend that. So just enforce it to do what I want it to do. And that's a little bit better. That's a nice arcing motion. So we get this, this curved motion with the hand, or the path that the hand is following. So that looks much better when you play it. Okay, so there's a little bit of a bump in the animation uh, where it anticipates and holds. So you have all this going on. You want to smooth that out, the perspective view here. And I can see, if you look at this control, the shoulder control, you can actually see it when you scrub over your, in your timeline. See, it's wagging back and forth. And I know that's the rotate X, so I'm going to go in there and take a look at that. And it's this dip here that's causing the funky behavior. So we'll just flatten that key out and scrub over it. And that helps. but there's something else. It's also the elbow. So it dips down here. We just want, we're just going to lift that up so there's a nice arc and that's looking way smoother. All right, so let's do some work on the wrist here. We're going into the point and we want the wrist to drag a little bit. I think it drags enough. We can probably get it to drag a little more here. Wouldn't hurt. Let's just take a look at what we can do. So we will break. Let's just go to our rotate tool. I want to break these rotate X and just break those tangents. Move those to where when you're moving these curves and you're bending these curves, make sure you're looking in the uh, camera view so you can see the result of what you're doing. So when I scrub over that now, that's a little bit better better drag. And I want to make sure that finger doesn't come doesn't pop out just yet. So I'm going to break those tangents too. And not yet. I'll break, I already broke that tangent, but I'll just bend the curve. So the finger doesn't quite come out yet. And then there it pops out. All right, so that's looking okay now. I think we're almost done. Okay, so I'm going to go to the elbow control. I'm just looking at this spot here. So we're really getting to a point where we're scrutinizing every little every little movement, and I'm picking out areas that I, I don't like, and then I'm going to the spot where I need to fix it and, and seeing what I can do to fix it. So I don't really like how the elbow pops up like that at the end, right after the overshoot. I mean, it doesn't look awful, but I'm going to see what I can do to actually improve it. So let's just go to the elbow control. In the graph editor, select the rotate Y. And let's just take a look at what the curve is doing. Whoop. All right, so if we scrub over that part. The... Okay, so it rises up pretty quick. So when if we had it rise up a little bit more gradually? And that's a little bit better. It's a real subtle, but it just bothered me a little bit. Let's just have a look at that. Well, that looks all right. And it's always good to have a moving hold. So we have a 10 frame hold at the beginning, and there's a little bit of a moving hold on that hand, but at the end, let's also do a moving hold. So our animation ends at frame 46. Let's go to, let's just go to 60. It doesn't have to be exactly 10 frames. I'll just key the whole arm by hitting our button, pressing S. I'll just make our whole scene uh, 60 frames long. So I just set a keyframe here and uh, created a hold. Let's just go to the shoulder control. So because that hold is completely still, all the curves are totally flat. So I'll just go in the middle of that hold somewhere and I'm going to grab the rotate Z of the shoulder control and we'll just give it a tiny bend, a very tiny bend. The elbow, we can do the same. Grab the elbow and the rotate X, uh, rotate Y. <laughs> give that a very subtle bend and then the wrist as well. 
think it would be good to have that moving hold and for the rotate Z so I'll just go straight to the rotate Z and we'll give that a little bit of a, a bend in it and then if we scrub over that whole last those last two keys you can see it's a very there's a very subtle movement on it but it's better than having it completely static so we have some drag the arm moving in an arcing motion making sure all their arcs are there anticipation some moving holds and overshoot and settle as usual if you need to play blast this select your camera pause in your outliner so that the camera is highlighted in green right click on the timeline play blast settings and the usual settings that we always use browse to where you want to save it and definitely give it a name like it should be Maya basic six underscore your name all right so that's it for the Maya basics classes I hope you enjoyed these sessions